Hello, Artful Manifestors. Thank you for joining me. Thank you for all your support, comments, likes, shares, subscribes. I do appreciate it so much. I read all your comments. They mean so much to me. Thank you. It really does help. To show you my appreciation, every full moon and new moon, I'm giving away a free personalized tarot reading. All you have to do to qualify this time is like this video, subscribe to this channel if you haven't already, and type flower moon in the comments. I'll be announcing the winner for this drawing on May 23rd, 2024. That's the next full moon, and it's the flower moon. Okay, so for today's topic, we are going to be connecting with your guides and finding out about who they are and what they're here to help you with, what they're currently helping you with. And yes, I'm so excited about this topic, about connecting with your guides and really finding out who they are and how they're helping you. Let's get started. This is a timeless reading for all zodiac signs. Whenever you come upon this reading, it that's when you're meant to hear it, even if it's after May 23rd. It's all in divine timing. And I do ask you to connect to your guides and ask for their assistance in interpreting anything that you hear, anything that you see, and of course the message that I share. This is a general reading, so take what resonates and leave the rest for others. They may, there's sometimes very specific messages that come through, so... Take which ones are for you and allow the other ones to be for others. All right, let's see. All right, for pile number one, we have staff foundation. And for pile number two, we have air, creativity. Give me one moment. And for pile number three, we have stone people, knowing. You may already know which reading you're most drawn to, but if you like to hear what the stones, crystals, objects are, let me introduce those to you now. For pile number one, we have a heart-shaped sea bean. And for pile number two, we have a heart-shaped sandstone. And for pile number three, we have fluorite in the shape of a heart. So whichever object, stone, or card you're most drawn to is probably the reading meant for you. Of course, you're always welcome to listen to two or all three of the readings and you'll find a link in the description box below. Hello, pile number one, welcome to your reading. You chose staff foundations. So already what this tells me is that your guide is here to support you. And we'll find out more. You also chose this sea bean shaped like a heart. We'll see what clues that brings us as we dive deeper into your reading. All right, I 
asking my guides to connect to your guides so we can find out who your guides are and what they're helping you with in this lifetime, what they're helping you with at this time, and any guidance they may have. All right, those two cards really wanted to come out. We have the Prince of Swords. Okay, the Prince of Swords has been coming out a lot in another deck. I was guided to use this deck. And the Queen of Staves. Let's draw some more. Let's see what other messages we can get. Oh, pile number one's guides, who they are. What they are helping pile number one with. Oh, there we go. We have the Princess of Cups. And the Ten of Staves. And the Queen of Sacred Circles. All right, let me adjust my camera and I'll be right back. All right, well, you know, what I notice first is that we have four feminine cards and one masculine card. And I didn't want to share too much about this until I pulled the cards and got confirmation. But in a previous reading, I shared about the sea bean being connected to my grandmother who has passed. And we certainly have a grandmother figure here and all these female figures. So what that tells me is that one of your guides is a feminine ancestor. Now this could very well be a grandmother, great grandmother, or it could go much further back. But you have a feminine ancestor that is guiding you and supporting you. The other thing that I notice is that you have the Queen of Staves and the Ten of Staves. You also have two queens, a princess and a prince. So what that tells me is that this ancestor was highly revered if they were not considered some type of leader or medicine person or royalty in their community and what really stands out to me about the staves is that you have the staff here and i want to read to you what the guidebook says about the staff it says, used for thousands of years by prophets, royalty, high priests, and priestesses, this magic tool, also known as a stave, is a symbol of authority. The first recorded use of a staff is in ancient Egypt. Moses used a staff to part the Red Sea. In modern spiritual practice, a staff is used to cast a circle for protection and as an aid to navigating the mythical, mystical path. Keep your eyes firmly on the path before you. Don't let others divert you from your journey. You're right on track. Keep going. Make a commitment and stand strong in your convictions. You are in the perfect position to start anew. Don't back down. Support will be provided. 
I love that. Very clear. So your guides, uh, and in particular, this guide, and they want me to tell you that you have more than one guide, but the one that is coming forward at this time is this uh, motherly, grandmotherly, feminine uh, ancestor who really believes in you and um, they are trying to help guide you and align you to your path, encourage you and support you. I want to draw some oracle cards for you and see what other information we can get about how this ancestor is presenting in your life and what they're currently helping you with as your guide. Oop. All right, here we go. Lady, another feminine. Enjoy growth and reap rewards. Right, they're really, you know, with the Prince of Swords here, they're really trying to get you to stay focused and be determined, stick to your path, don't give up, you're almost there. Sky Father, trust in the unknown. And Eagle, see from a higher perspective. So that's two eagles. They look like the same eagle, just facing in different directions. So when you see eagles, just know that is a sign. And that's a sign of your guides leading you to stay on the path. And there's something about eagle sight, eagle vision, right? Again, they want you to stay focused and see the big picture. Don't, uh, they're saying something about don't get caught up in the weeds. Uh, you know, zoom out and see the big picture. All right, let's uh, draw some more and see what other message your guides have for you. What other message do you have for pile number one? What other guidance do you have? How are you showing up? So these two cards want to come out. We have Air Guardian, shift your perception. So, you know, we have Prince of Swords here, which is starting a new way to think about things, perceive things, see things. We have see from higher perspective, shift your perception. They are trying to get you to see something in a different way. And it could be that you're seeing something as a burden with the Ten of Staves, and they're trying to get you to see it in a different way, how it's actually growing something in you that if you could just zoom out and see your whole life, you'd see the rewards that you're going to reap as a result. Shaman, trust in higher forces. Again, we have trust in the unknown and trust in higher forces. So they want you to know that they are with you, they are guiding you, they are protecting you. And they want you to trust that they are sending you signs and signals, synchronicities, 
They want you to trust that everything is going to work out. They really, they see that you're using your energy, uh, again, um, down in the weeds. That, that's not a phrase that I normally use, but something about being down in the weeds. Uh, you're focusing too small on something and they want you to focus on the big picture because that's what's going to get you past the little tiny things. Let's, uh, let me draw some cards from this Oracle deck. What other messages do you have for pile number one? What guidance do you have for pile number one? We have planning, setting intentions, and optimism. All right, there's something you're not feeling great about that they really want to shift your, percep your perception on. And they want you to set your intentions on what it is that you want to achieve. That's what they're here to help you with, to achieve something. Look at this queen of staves. This would be like the queen of wands in other decks, but this one, I was led specifically to use this deck today for this reading and this queen of staves has a different energy. Normally the queen of wands, we see her sitting on a throne with a black cat and she's, you know, the, the meaning is that she's very charismatic and likable and I'm not saying that you aren't, but the queen of staves in this deck, she may be likable, but she doesn't really care so much about what other people think. She's a queen. She's powerful. And that's the energy they want you to have is don't be concerned about what other people think about other things. You're a queen or a king, your royalty. Stay focused on your goal and they are sending you signals. What other message do you have for pile number four? Oops, that was a lot. All right, let's see what we have here. Positivity, change. Right, they want you to adopt a more positive attitude. Uh, let's see if we can maybe fit all of these better. Summer, expansion, growth. There's growth again. And uh, again, I'm doing this in May, so summer is just right around the corner. Broom, energy clearing, freshening. So of course, uh, any doubts that you have, they're asking you to sweep that away. Clear your mind. Stay focused. Cup of tea. Patience. Reassessment. So again, uh, see the big picture. They're telling me that some of you may be in a rush to uh, achieve things. And uh, they want you to, one, enjoy the journey. But also remember that saying, Rome wasn't built in one day. So you're, you're, they're here to assist you with something big, something important. So be patient. Zoom out and see the big pictures, what they keep saying. Sun, 
healing energy, happiness, comfort, and joy. Love that. Really beautiful. All right, let's um, let's get a couple of cards from this deck. What other message do you have for pile number one at this time? What guidance do you have? Oh, they're also telling me that um, in addition to summer being significant, because we do have the summer card and the sun card here, we have the eagles. Uh, sunflowers may be a sign for you. What other messages, signs do you have for pile number one? Look at this. The staff. If you see staffs, that is your reminder. They are supporting you. But it's also a reminder of your power. Remember your power. And the other thing they're showing me in this picture is that the staff is leaning on a tree. So that's a couple of things. One, they are here for your, to support you, for you to lean on them. But also in this picture, the staff is on the tree, meaning that the person holding it doesn't require its assistance. They're able to stand on their own, just like this queen. Her staff isn't for support. It's a symbol of her power. Shell. All right, shells may be another sign for you. Pearls also. They're saying something about listening. You know uh, how you can hold a shell up to your ear and they say you hear the ocean. Uh, there's, they want you to listen because they are speaking to you. Offering. Birds are also a sign. Some of you may be feeding the birds. We have the two eagles here, an owl here, a bird here. So there may be, and just as I said that, I don't know if you heard the bird outside. Some of you, they want you to listen to the birds and notice what you're thinking, what you're doing when you hear birds. They are speaking to you through the birds. They're sending you signs and signals to help you stay on path. So sometimes it's to snap you out of a rumination or a worry. The birds might, you'll, you might notice the birds and that's to remind you to stay focused on your path. And other times you may hear the birds and you are imagining the best of your future and they are applauding that. It's like when you look at the clock and you notice that it says 11-11. All right. We have the seer. 
This card has been coming out quite a bit lately too. We see her here with the cat. So again, it's things that you may see, synchronicities like uh, numbers, or you may see pictures of staffs, birds, sunflowers, in addition to seeing them in real life. All of these are messages that your ancestor guide is sending you. And the listener, hold on one second. All right, so remember, they were saying something about you hearing something and here we have the listener. They, they also want you to hear what your heart is telling you. Listen to your soul. And the seer we have right above, you know, see from a higher perspective. And we have the Prince of Swords here again. There's something you're not seeing. They want to shift your perception and see things in a different way. I want to check the guidebook for these two cards. Give me one moment. All right, I'm going to read to you the Eagle. It says, look at things from a different angle. Fly higher and see new possibilities. In animal medicine, both Native American and Celtic, the eagle draws his power and strength from the sun. He is a powerful, strong, and courageous guide who is able to see for miles. He approaches all things with intelligence, grace, and poise, and he has the capacity to make a plan from a higher space before putting it into action. When the eagle card appears in a reading, it shows that you have a real ability to take things higher and to move beyond the limitations of your ego and your selfish desires. All right, I love that. It also says, eagle medicine swirls around you, encouraging you to recognize that your views or vision may be limited at this time. All right, let's see what the air guardian has to say. All right, before I read to you about the air guardian there, reminding me about the sun and that the eagle card said, the eagle gets its power from the sun. And so some of you may not be spending enough time outside. Of course, be safe, uh, do what is right for you. But if you can go outside and especially during sunset or sunrise, uh, that's a good time to receive the sun's energy. But any time of the day that you can go outside and Face the sun with your eyes closed. Turn your face towards the sun with your eyes closed and you will be able to hear, receive, sense, perceive uh, what your inner voice is telling you, what your guides are trying to align you with. All right, the air guardian message is change the way you think and you will change your whole reality. And that's the energy I'm getting from this Prince of Swords as well. The Air Guardian card represents the angels of the air element. Traditionally, air is all about thoughts, thinking, and everything that's happening in the mind. So these angels can help you to overcome any thoughts that have come back to haunt you from the past and to see the world more clearly. They are guiding you to change the way you think about certain situations as this, as this could be standing between you and greatness. When this card arises, it's an opportunity to learn about your way of thinking. You are being guided to recognize that not all you see is exactly the way you see it. 
Sometimes the mind can play games and sometimes our perceptions can be wrong. If you are being challenged or feel that there's a lack of clarity and direction in your life at this moment, there's a good chance the way you're thinking or what you're focusing on has a lot to do with that reality. You are being guided to open your eyes and your mind, go beyond any limits you have set for yourself and recognize that the way you see the world is how you will experience the world. Opportunities are moving in your direction, but they will only open up for you if you are ready to do the internal work to support them. I love that we have the word support in there. You know, we keep getting this support, the staff. Uh, there's definitely something about that. And they're also guiding me to read to you from the guidebook of this tarot deck, what the Prince of Swords has to say. But I love that the Prince of Swords is the first one that came out. And the energy of the Prince of Swords is about starting a new way of thinking and a new way of communicating with yourself, with others, listening. All right. Uh, it says, fertilizing a masculine domain with feminine waters. Meditative practices that strengthen mind and body. Disciplining emotions. So I love, you know, how different creators of tarot cards have subtle little nuances and the meanings of these cards. But this is what your, your maternal... Uh, feminine ancestor guide is assisting you with right now. She is sending you signs so that you can broaden your vision, you can expand your mind, you can discipline yourself and uh, keep moving towards that which is in alignment. They want me to tell you that you're so close there's something about this summer. Again, um, I'm in May, so summer is right around the corner. Something, you're going to see a significant change in a month or two, they're telling me. So depending on when you come upon this reading, if it's not in May and you come upon it later, just know a month or two from now, you're going to see some progress. Stay positive. Positive changes are coming. Love that for you. Love it. Very nice pile number one. What a beautiful spirit guide ancestor that you have and a powerful one. Wise, powerful, but yet gentle like a grandmother. Really beautiful energy. Pile number one, that is your message. Enjoy your journey. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number two. Welcome to your reading. You chose the heart-shaped sandstone. And sandstone is the stone of creativity. It helps to promote clarity of thought. And it also helps to ease movement through life and facilitate positive changes. You also chose the card air, creativity. So already we have a serendipity, a connection between the stone and the card. And this tells me that your guides are speaking to you in your thoughts. So you may think that it's your imagination, but they are speaking to you in your thoughts. So these would be positive thoughts, thoughts that are in alignment with your soul's path. And also what I'm seeing is the color orange. Now I have a ton of these little stickies and uh, I just happen to only have this one right by me when I drew this card. But even the leaves are orange 
And so orange may be a symbol for you right now. It may be a sign. You may notice things that are orange and that's one way that your guides are letting you know that you're there and they're reminding you to be positive, to enjoy yourself. And the other thing is that they're telling me is that they're bringing in the winds of change. So wh whichever guide or guides that are really forward in your life right now, taking a forward seat in your life, what they're helping you do at this time is to manifest, transform, do some kind of change in your life. The winds of change, they keep saying. So let's draw some tarot cards and see if we can get some more information about who your guides are and what they're helping you with at this time. So who are pile number two's guides and how are they helping pile number two at this time? I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in. All right, let's see what we have. Five of staves. Five of staves would be like five of wands. And the four of swords. The princess of staves. and Eight of Sacred Circles. All right, let's see if we can draw a couple more from this deck and see what other information we can get about who your guides are, what they're helping you with at this time. We have the Princess of Cups. So two Princess cards and the Princess in this deck is like a page. So it's the beginning of something. Curiosity. So Princess of Wands or Staves and Princess of Cups. Who a pile number? Ooh. All right, here's a couple more. Oh, three more. All right, let's take them in. We're just going to move this down so we can fit a little bit more in here. All right, we have the King of Swords. All right. So they're helping you move from the energy of the Four of Swords to the King of Swords. And, you know, when I saw this card, I didn't mention it, but what I was going to tell you is that the air is very much like the suit of swords in tarot. So about thoughts and communication, but really specifically what they're telling me is thoughts. And they're saying thoughts become things. The 10 of sacred circles, very happy. So 10 of pentacles, 10 of sacred circles. And the Hermit. All right, the Five of Staves is about strategic 
planning and we see this straight path towards this structure here. And so they are trying to line things up for you and keep you in alignment with your soul path. There's an idea that you have that they don't want you to dismiss. And um, if you'll notice in this reflection here, this person is reflected their selves. There's also a younger version of themselves. So there's this message of your inner child and this being something that's near and dear to your heart and soul. Um, the Princess of Staves is about receiving information from the other realm. Look at this vessel on her head, on her crown chakra. It's She is receiving information from the other side. So again, we have this message that they are sending you messages, downloads, and for you, you're going to hear them as your thoughts or you already are hearing them as your thoughts. The Eight of Sacred Circles is about fine-tuning your skills, your crafts. So you're learning how to hear your guides and messages from the other side, as well as fine-tuning any skills that you need in relationship to something that you have been working on. The Princess of Cups is like a magical being that knows about plants and the energies of the earth and how to use those different energies to help themselves and help others. So I, I feel that you have a guide that's helping you do that as well. And then we have the King of Swords that is a very mature energy. So you're going from the Four of Swords to the King of Swords. This is what they want for you, is they want you to be able to use your sword as a tool. You see he's fishing for something. He's using his intellect, his thoughts, his communication as a tool to achieve uh, his needs, to attain what he needs physically, spiritually, mentally in his life, rather than using his sword as a weapon. So they're helping you to do that. And then the hermit is, again, it's this integration, this reflection, introspection on all your wisdoms from your past. And I love that it's coming out underneath the Four of Swords where we have this inner child and uh, you're integrating the, the lessons that you've gained from the experiences that you've had so far. And that's part of the messages and the downloads that they are sending you. And you're going to use that not only to understand yourself, but it's going to help you with others. And I definitely feel more than one of your guides coming through. And at any given moment, we have, you know, multiple guides, multiple energies that are helping us. But in this reading right now, pile number two, I'm feeling multiple guides. And in fact, they are asking me to get my Astro Dice so that I can roll it and we can see how many guides are helping you right now in different areas of your life. So give me one moment. All right, so you see I have the Astro Dice here. And Spirit, please tell us how many guides are coming forward at this time, working with the energies around pile number two, working with pile number two's energies, helping them to facilitate, expand, grow, learn, integrate everything. How many guides is, are working with them right now? 
11. Wow. Amazing. And 11 is a master number. Just want you to know that. So there could be, uh, I did a reading recently. I don't remember if it was the last reading or the reading before, but there was a message that came through that there was a master spirit working with you. So there's definitely some ascended master that is working with you right now. Wow, that's amazing, truly amazing. I I knew that I could feel more than one guide coming through. Uh, that's amazing. I'm just going to put that right there. And I did not do that for pile number one, just to let you know. Uh, one and one is two. This is the second pile, pile number two, reading number two. So perhaps two is also a significant number. And uh, let's look at what's at the bottom of the tarot deck. We have the Empress, beautiful. Yes, and remember that the sandstone is a stone of creativity, and this card says air creativity. So they're helping you to create something right now. Let's draw some oracle cards and see if we can get some clues as to what they're helping you to create. All right. Okay, that was quick. Oak tree, power, courage, and strength. Nice. So, growth. They're helping you to expand, to grow, to become more powerful, to become more confident, uh, to believe in yourself. Amazing. How... A pile number two's guides helping them right now. Our pile number two's guides helping them right now. Some of you may even be picking up acorns and they see you doing that. And they also want to tell you that acorns may be a sign if you notice acorns. All right, that was quite a few, but they came out, so I'm going to go ahead and take them. All right, bird, freedom, opportunity. Okay, they are helping you work towards some type of independence, some type of freedom from any contracts that you have with the other realm, past lives, or even a kind of energetic contracts that may have been created in this lifetime. They're helping you to release yourself from those and uh, they're bringing you opportunities to do that as well as opportunities for you to grow, expand, and releasing these contracts is gonna help you reclaim your power, feel more empowered, more strong, stronger, and uh, move through life easier, which remember that was the message of both of these energies is they're helping you to move through life easier. Going from the energy of the Four of Swords to the King of Swords. Winter, an ending, recharging, reflection. So the Hermit card is recharging, reflection. And also they're reminding me that the hermit is a mentor. And so your guides are your mentor and they're encouraging you to, as you receive download, downloads, thoughts, even visions, some of you maybe it's like a daydream, something that you just kind of see in your mind's eye to write that down. And cardinals. We have a bird and then we have a cardinal here. So very specific for someone that one of your guides may be showing itself as a cardinal in your life to let you know that they are there. 
I'm going to move these up so that we can make a little more room for some more cards. Wow, pile number two, it, you are so special. You have some really powerful, special guides uh, that really value you and want to nurture you and encourage you so that you can be the creator. Seeds, new ideas, hope, open-mindedness. Again, and we have more acorns here. So yes, with this Four of Swords, again, they're telling me some idea that you have uh, that you should, you know, uh, not give up on it, that you should pursue it. You should have faith in this idea. Be open-minded to different paths of how to achieve it. The princess here and the princess here one thing about it is being curious. So the way that this Princess of Cups learns information about plants, for example, is by energetically connecting with those plants and asking them what kind of medicine they offer. So there is a message to stay curious and to keep asking, how can I achieve this? How can I get there? What is this telling me? And every time you ask a question, you're going to receive an answer. And for many of you, you're receiving these answers in the form of your thoughts. It's a direct link. It's either going to be a thought like in a whole sentence or just going to be an understanding of like an instant download. Salt, protection, banishing negativity. So just a reminder to keep your thoughts focused on the positive and what you want. If you start to notice the inner critic rising up to kind of redirect it and replace it. Uh, that's just the ego trying to help you survive. It's not your guides. So your guides aren't gonna say what if followed by some negative worry or something like that. Um, your guides are more gonna give you thoughts that are inspirational, like an idea, like I know how I can fix this or an inspiration of, you know, I feel like going here right now and that's going to lead you to something and just stay open and ask like, okay, what am I supposed to see here? It's, it feels very adventurous and mystical and magical. Love it. And also you are protected, but again, new beginnings and expansion. So they really are leading you to something new stay curious and uh, be open to new things let's get some of these cards and see what other message your guides have for you at this time pile number two i love your guides they're just awesome and i love how Clear their message is about getting you from the Four of Swords to the King of Swords and that they're helping you to come up with this strategic plan to get there. They're helping you hone your craft. What other messages does Pile Number Two's guides have for them at time? What other guidance does Pile Number Two's Oh, there we go. We have Earth Guardian. Stay rooted and grounded. So they're telling me that if your thoughts, again, start to turn negative or you start to spiral towards worry or uh, ruminating on something from the past to... Find a way to ground yourself. Go outside, spend time in nature. 
go for walks and you know pick up an acorn notice a feather bring it inside put it on your altar and um, stay rooted and grounded and breathe they're telling me to tell you to breathe because you did get this air when you start to notice that you are worrying or ruminating focus on your breath there are different types of breathing techniques that you can research and find one that really resonates with you, but basically slowing down your breath, taking deep breaths, maybe putting pauses in between your breaths, that's going to help to keep you in the present and keep you grounded. Mirror Guardian. This keeps coming up. Very interesting. Take time to reflect, which is what we see in the Four of Swords and the Hermit card. Because this card keeps coming up, I'm gonna look at the guidebook and see if there's some specific message there for you related to your reading. Give me one moment. All right, let me just go ahead and read to you what this says. Take some time to reflect on your strengths and challenges and how far you've come. Recognize your gifts. Angels accept you just the way you are. Even when you are going through a challenging time, they still hold you in the highest esteem. The mirror guardian, a female angel looking into the mirror of life, invites you to witness your spiritual strength and beauty to see yourself as angels do. The mirror represents the fact that your core beliefs and ideas are in fact what is reflected back to you by the world. Your life is one big mirror of how you feel within and the mirror guardian helps you to recognize that. When this card appears, you are being invited to take some time to see where you are right now. So what that says to me is that, again, see how far you've come, reflect on that, and understand that thoughts become things. I said that at the very beginning of this reading. So if you are reflecting on past failures or past hurts, you're going to continue to manifest that in your life. Instead, be like the King of Swords and use your thoughts as a tool to focus on achieving exactly the life that you want and that you deserve. They are also saying to me that Sometimes one of your ears may start ringing. Notice that. Notice how you're feeling in that moment, what you're doing, what you're thinking. Uh, they're trying to send you messages through your thoughts. And again, uh, just be mindful of your thoughts. Stay rooted, stay grounded. Recognize how far you've come. And remember that your outer world is going to reflect your inner world. So really nurture your inner child. Uh, recognize yourself uh, rather than waiting for outside validation. Validate yourself. You're receiving validation from your guides, which you have so many of at this time. And... Yes, I see you becoming the Empress. This is what you are. You actually are the Empress already, but what they want you to focus on is what you are creating because thoughts become things. So you're the Empress creating, whether you are conscious of that creation or not, and what your guides are helping you to do at this time is to become conscious of your thoughts so that you can focus them to your targets and what it is that you want in your life.
amazing pile number two. So impressed with you. You must be a very special person with all of these amazing gifts. You're very intuitive and creative and your guides want you to know that. I want you to recognize that. I want you to recognize your creativity, your power, your strength, your courage, and to be on the lookout for new opportunities and to stay curious. Keep asking questions. Ask the question in your mind, ask the question out loud, and they are gonna answer you. Pile number two, that is your reading. Enjoy your journey. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye. Hello, pile number three. Welcome to your reading. You chose the heart-shaped fluorite, which is both grounding and harmonizing. It also helps to increase your ability to communicate with your spirit guides and animal spirits. You also chose the card Stone People, and it says here, Knowing. And what they're telling me is that uh, some of you already connect with stones and crystals and that sometimes you use the crystals as a means to receive downloads from your guides. And if you aren't doing that, then they are nudging you to do that. They're also showing me you receiving downloads at night. It could be for some of you while you're asleep. You may even already practice, you know, going to sleep, thinking about how you can achieve something, how you can do something. And then when you wake up, even if you don't remember your dreams, you just have this, it just seems like this idea. You just know, oh, I know what I need to do. It's that kind of experience. And they're also showing me some of you standing outside at night, something about the night air and the rustling of the leaves, the trees, the gentle breeze or the wind carrying messages to you. Really nice, it, it feels so nice. All right, let's draw some tarot cards and see if we can get some more information about pile number three's spirit guides. Please tell us who pile number three's spirit guides are and how they're helping them at this time. Pile number one and two were both very different from each other. So I'm really interested to see who comes through for you, pile number three. I do put the names of all the cards that I use in the description box below if that's something that you're interested in. Please tell us who pile number three's spirit guides are. Which of their spirit guides are helping them at this time? And how? All right, we have the Three of Swords. All right, so they may be helping you with some painful event or experience. They're helping you heal. And I feel the second card wanted to come out as well. We have the Queen of Swords. Love that. Love that that comes out right after the Three of Swords. So they're helping you transform your pain into a power, is what they're saying. We see her using her energy. You see how her hand is being held to grow this tree or trees out of this rock or block of ice.
Let's get some more cards. Tell us who are pile number three spirit guides. Oh. Six of staves, celebration, achievement. They're definitely helping you to achieve something, achieve recognition, achieve status, they're saying. Some kind of celebratory status. How are you helping pile number three? Who are pile number three's spirit guides? Oh, this one wants to come out. Prince of Staves. So we have Six of Staves and Prince of Staves. Who are pile number three's spirit guides? Which of pile number three's spirit guides are helping them at this time? And how are they helping them? All right, we have the Princess of Swords. They're teaching you something. Oh, look at that. The Sun. They're teaching you how to be happy and how to succeed. Who are pile number three's guides? Woo. All right. The King of Cups. Mastering your emotions, healing your emotions. Who are pile number? Oh. Okay, here we go. The Prince of Swords. Okay, wow. You have the Princess of Swords, the Queen of Swords, and the Prince of Swords. And you also have the Prince of Staves and the King of Cups. Lots of court cards as well as the Sun. All right, I definitely feel that you have some male energy around you, male guides. We see a male on the horse here, a male here, 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 and this is a male as well. And if we look at the story that we see here, we do have a lot of swords. So I feel like they're helping you through the lessons of the swords. The three of swords in this deck is illustrated by this samurai warrior leaving home. We see his loved ones here. And it could be that there's a some kind of separation, whether it's an actual physical separation or kind of a, an energetic separation from past experiences. And then here we see growth, a lot of growth in healing and success. And you're beginning now to use all of these lessons and energy as fuel passion to build your own empire. We see you going through the lessons of the swords with the princess of swords, the prince of swords, learning how that the sword can be a sword of truth. It can be a tool. It can be a weapon. It can cut. It can defend and you're mastering how to use that uh, in a beneficial way. 
Let's draw some oracle cards and see what other information we can get about your guides and how they are helping you at this time. What else can you tell us about pile number three's guides and how they are helping them at this time? Who are pile number three's guides and how are they helping them at this time? There is a message about you being the parent that you didn't have or being a better parent, taking the lessons from your own poor family and improving. All right, let's see what we have here. We have Fire Guardian. Ignite your passion. I told you that's what the Prince of Staves is. We even see this triangle here like a pyramid. So there is definitely something about this new passion or this passion um, being the result of you succeeding at growing from whatever this past experience is that you're leaving behind, you've departed. For some of you, it's something you left behind years ago. For others of you, it may be something that you left behind recently. Magic Guardian, unlock the magic within. High Priestess, Harner, Harness, Mystic Power. So here we see the goddess Bast, and here we see Hathor. Elder, move beyond ancestral patterns. What did I tell you? There's definitely a message here about you moving behind some kind of energy cycle, some kind of repeated behavior or energy that's been cyclical in your family, and you now succeeding, tri being triumphant over that. They're helping you to break these energy patterns. Wise one, grow within your current situation. Right, so rather than escapism, you are looking at things head on and growing as a result of them using uh, what was maybe used against you as a weapon to now use it as a tool. And the high priest, wow. And I believe this is Hathor again. So there's definitely some kind of Egyptian spirit guide around you. And some kind of male energy spirit guide. It could be the energy of Hathor that is around you. I want to check the guidebook for these two cards and let me come right back. Okay, I want to read to you what the guidebook says about the high priestess and the high priest. For the high priestess, it says, you are a mystic with the capacity to connect with energies that go beyond the human senses. Within you is a force of magic that is directed by your will. There is an opportunity for you to rise up at this time, but it requires dedication and discipline. You're being guided to look at what you are 
working on or at the situation before you and determine where your priorities lie. If you are unable to figure that out, you must use your intuition and discernment to focus on what will bring you closer to your goal and the happiness of everyone involved. When this card arrives, it's also important for you to check in with your intuition as it will give you guidance that will be important for your growth. All right, and let's look at what the High Priest says. So there's definitely a balancing of male and female energies, and I feel that you have both guides, masculine and feminine energy in the spirit realm as guides uh, working with you right now. So the high priest says, you are a bridge between heaven and earth, and it's important for you to know that you are more powerful and connected than you may think. Everything you are giving attention and energy to at this time is creating your way forward. There have been some setbacks, but accept these experiences that they have led you to a deeper understanding of yourself and your spirit. Know that you are being guided by the ancestors to direct your thoughts and energies towards what you want to grow. And that's what I see here. Heal and expand and then watch it happen right before your eyes. Yes, you are magical. Unlock the magic within you and recognize that you have the power. The King of Cups is a very mature, stable, emotional person. And you have spirit guides that are guiding your spiritual evolution at this time. They're also uh, encouraging you to meditate. I want to draw some cards from this deck and see what other messages, guidance that your spirit guides have for you at this time. I love that the sun, the sun is here in the center. And I do feel a strong Egyptian pre presence as well as others. And in fact, uh, they are guiding me to use this. I used this for pile number two. It's the Astro Dice to see how many guides are around you at this time. We always have, you know, multiple spirit guides in our life at any given moment. Uh, but some may be there just for a season and you may have one or two that are with you your entire life. So let's see how many are working with your energy at this time, helping you to heal, helping you to align, helping you to achieve and succeed. How many spirit guides are working with pile number three at this time? All right, it came out one. So... I feel that that one is a masculine energy. And again, that doesn't mean that you only have one spirit guide, but it does mean that this reading is talking about one spirit guide that is a masculine energy. And I feel for many of you, there is this type of Egyptian energy like Hathor. You may even uh, check out research Hathor if you haven't before. All right, let's get some more information about what guidance pile number three's spirit guides have for them at this time, or this spirit guide in particular. Oh, here we go. We have the watering can ask for help sharing burdens there you go your spirit guide wants you to ask them for help
they are sending you messages. They want to communicate to you. They are encouraging you to meditate. Lavender, tranquility, kindness, and self-care. And look at the crystals. They want you to meditate. They want you to use crystals if you're not already. You even see a little heart here. Wonderful. All right, they are guiding me to read from the guidebook about this first card that led you to this pile, pile number three, Stone People. It says, a knowing will be revealed to you. Stone People are the record keepers of the planet and hold the knowledge you now require. Connecting with these teachers stirs ancient buried memories of honoring nature and shamanic ways. You know deep within that this is the truth of who you are. You have spent many nights staring at stars, feeling the magic of a wooded grove, and hearing the whispers of the ancestors in the breeze. Oh my goodness, that's what I told you at the beginning of this reading. Wow, I love that. Confirmation, okay. You, the great mystery surrounds stone circles. The stones hold the secrets of all they have witnessed. There are many aspects of history that are still to be discovered. Stone people brings you back to your very roots. Slow your mind to connect with this energy and the right stone will be put in your path. It might be a tiny pebble, a rock, or a large boulder. Hold the stone so that your past is revealed and unanswered questions can come to light. Breathe in the knowledge that stone people wishes to impart. Be ready for that aha moment. Be clear about your intentions. Investigate thoroughly before proceeding. Some information you require will be presented unexpectedly. A return to study. You know more than you realize. That's what this card said, right? You know more than you realize. Be open to esoteric information. Meditate at a sacred stone circle. So again, there's that other message of meditating. So they want you to meditate. They want you to uh, connect with stones, with crystals, if you're not already doing that. And they want you to ask them for help. And also ask the stones and crystals for help. This feels like a very ancient energy that is your spirit guide that's helping you. Really powerful. And they're really helping you to transform, transmute your sword energy path into an amazing tool that is going to bring you recognition and success and wisdom, helping you to move beyond ancestral patterns. Really nice, beautiful pile number three. Enjoy the journey. The light in me sees the light in you. Thank you. Bye.